Hi guys, um, this is Lorenzo. I'm going to be uh, teaching you guys about the vitamins. Uh, we did a review session on this before concerning vitamins and I just want to reiterate the things that um, are necessary and important of uh, vitamin systems uh, within the human body. Um, now remember that in vitamins we have um, it's we have a division between water soluble vitamins and lipid soluble, soluble vitamins and the water soluble vitamins compose of the continuum of B1 which is thymine, um, B2 which is riboflavin, B3 which is niacin or nicotinamide, B5 which is pentathenate, B6 which is pyridoxine, B12 which is cobalamin, folate, um, H which is uh, biotin and vitamin C which is ascorbate and uh, the second um, type of vitamins is a lipid soluble vitamins and it is composed of the following continuum vitamin A which is retinol, retinol vitamin D which is also known as colsicalciferol vitamin E which is also called as tocopherols vitamin K which is known as quinones and proenzyme A it's also known as carotenoids now so like I already told you guys about the different types of vitamins now it can be water soluble vitamins or lipid soluble vitamins <coughs> excuse me and now let me tell you about the different types, the specifics of these vitamins, such as um, their function, uh, the effects of deficiency, and if they have any toxicity levels, all right? So for vitamin B1, which is also known as, uh, as I said before, it's thymine. Um, vitamin B1, it functions as a thymine pyrophosphate, and this is really important for the conversion of pyruvate to acetylcoenzyme A and alpha-ketoglutarate to succinylcoenzyme A and it's also important for the pentose phosphate pathway. Now when we have a deficiency of vitamin B1, it uh, results in the clinical manifest of beriberi, neuropathy, weakness, and numbness. And uh, there is no toxicity level in vitamin B1. If you can take as much as vitamin B1 as possible, though there's no uh, fatality, there's no toxicity of it. Now going on to vitamin B2, um, this is also known as riboflavin. It functions as part of the flavin adenine dinucleotide, this is also known in medically, um, we, are, we call this FAD. FAD because again, it's called flavin adenine dinucleotide. Um, it is also important and imperative for the hydrogen acceptor and donor in the TCA cycle, especially seen in beta oxidation of, um, particular, uh, of particular TCA cycles. Um, when you have a deficiency of vitamin B2, we have the manifest of angular stomatitis and also increased vascularization of the cornea. And again, there is no toxicity level for vitamin B2. For vitamin B3, this is also known as niacin or nicotinamide. Um, it functions as part of the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Ad, uh, this is NAD, ad nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It functions for hydrogen acceptor donor in glycolysis. It functions um, uh, in the TCA cycle. It functions in the beta oxidation. It functions in the NADP pentose phosphate pathway as well. When you have a deficiency of vitamin B3, we have pellagra, um, we have uh, lassitude, we have poor appetite, diarrhea, dementia, and there is no toxicity levels for vitamin B3. For vitamin B5, we have it's a, it functions as a call enzyme A, and it um, it's an activator for the fatty acids, um, also for the acetyl coenzyme A, for succinyl coenzyme A for melanin, co melanin coenzyme A, for energy metabolism, for cholesterol synthesis, for ketone formation. And when we have a deficiency of vitamin B5, we have the manifest of weakness, malaise, vomits, and cramps. There, and again, there's no toxicity levels for B5. For vitamin B6, uh, it functions for as coenzyme in the transmission, um, for transamination, I mean. Uh, also, it has a function in phosphoglyceride formation, nicotinamide formation from the tyrosine um, amino acid. Um, the, when you have a deficiency of vitamin B6, it leads to kidney damage, also amino aciduria. Um, so we covered that. Now let's cover vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin, right? And this is important for DNA and RNA synthesis. So as I said before, um, it functions in the purine and pyrimidine synthesis and cell division. When we have a deficiency of vitamin B12, we have uh, the manifest of megaloblastic anemia, neuropathy, weakness, and um, there is no to toxicity level for this one. For folate, um, the vitamin folate, it functions, in, it functions with vitamin B12 in amino acid metabolism. So we have 
um, we have dualistic roles in some certain certain vitamins, right? Um, so as a result, uh, deficiency when you have a deficiency of vitamin twelve, vitamin B twelve, we also see the deficiency of folate, and um, as like vitamin B twelve, there's no toxicity level for um, for folate. Now for vitamin A, vitamin H, um, it functions primarily as a carbon dioxide carrier in the fatty acid synthesis and pyruvate formation. When we have a deficiency of vitamin H, we observe dermatitis, lassitude, depression, and muscle pain. And like the other vitamins I said previously, this does not have any toxicity levels. Now for vitamin C, which is also known as ascorbic acid or ascorbate, it functions primarily for collagen synthesis, um, for fatty acid oxidation, for catecholamine synthesis, and for iron and copper absorption in the gastrointestinal tract. When we have a deficiency of vitamin C, vitamin C, we have the important manifestation of scurvy, which is basically the loosening of the gums when your teeth begin to fall off. Um, we, we observe person uh, losing teeth, as I said. We observe peripheral and central edema. We observe hemorrhage. We observe open wounds. And um, there is no toxicity level for vitamin C. Vitamin C. For vitamin A, it functions as in, um, in spermatogenesis, which is the, basically the formation of sperms, for westral cycles, for vision, for cartilage growth, for epithelial cell division. Uh, the def when we have an, a deficiency of vitamin A intake, this leads to a person being night blind, um, infertile, as well as poor growth. Um, toxicity levels, we do have toxic toxicity level for, for vitamin A. Um, acute as large doses, chronic as prolonged excess intake. And for vitamin D, it functions, pr uh, promotes calcium uptake in the GAT, uh, resorption in ca of calcium in the kidney, and maintains normal calcium function in nerve and muscle. When we have deficiency of vitamin C, we observe rickets, which is basically poor bone calcification, and convulsive seizure. When we have vitamin D deficiency as well, especially seen in um, mostly elderly women or geriatric women, by the um, basically women above the age of 50, uh, they usually have poor bone resorption. This leads to uh, basically um, weak bones. Uh, osteoporosis will eventually manifest eventually if untreated and unhindered. Vitamin K um, functions primarily in the formation of clotting factors, prothrombin, calcium resorption in kidney, and when we have a deficiency of vitamin K intake, we observe impaired blood clotting, we observe increased prothrombin time, and uh, there is no toxicity level for this one as well. For vit um, provitamin A, which is also known as carotenoids, um, it functions primarily, um, it's a source of vitamin A, and it has no function by itself. Um, it, it's basically a complementary vitamin, right? As I said before, uh, when we observe a deficiency of vitamin A, we see uh, vitamin A deficiency. So when you have, when, when you have, when, when you don't have enough provitamin A intake, you observe deficiency of vitamin A. As I said before, everything is complementary in this uh, in vitamins. Um, Basically, that this is this summarizes the vitamins, the two types of vitamins, water soluble and lipid soluble. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and review this uh, because you know this is very important for daily human uh, nutrient intake. Thank you very much, and you have a nice day. Bye.